Menachem, brothers and sisters. I start by honouring the memory of Marie Colvin and recognising the contribution of Channel 4 Journalist for Democracy in Sri Lanka and Tamil Net for reporting on the terrible truth of what has been happening. I also commend the brave stands taken by Tamil civil society groups who remind us that Tamils as a nation are entitled to national self-determination as well as that of the Jaffna University University Students' Union speaking out against the LLRC. They have shown us the lesson to learn. The lesson is that only a genuinely independent international inquiry will do. Nothing less. The debate should be not whether the cup is half full or half empty which is taking place at the United Nations between the two blocks. The problem is that the cup is full of poison. It really doesn't matter how much is, whether it's full or not. We refuse to drink the poison of Victor's justice. The LLRC will entrench Sinhala state rule over Tamil territories and its fraudulent legitimacy to do so. An international independent inquiry must address the ongoing assaults on the Tamil people, the rape of Tamil women by occupying forces, the continued detention and torture of Tamil militants, the grabbing and colonization of Tamil lands, the threats to life and the disappearances of Tamils. These continuing human rights violations are taking place behind the veil of national and international impunity. What they amount to are the acts of an illegal occupying force. It is ludicrous, it is ludicrous to expect this force to investigate its own crimes. Moreover, the major powers are helping to consolidate the annexation of Tamil territory. The fundamental precondition to defend the Tamil people is is that all prisoners are released and that the Sri Lankan state withdraws its occupation. How else can the victims be even speak in safety? An international independent inquiry must investigate the massacre in 2009 of somewhere between 40,000 and 146,000 people. A clear case of genocide but not as the Western powers portray it. They want to use the genocide argument for continuing their own intervention. But the 2009 genocide was the product of their intervention in the first place. It was they who rearmed the military capacity of the Sri Lankan state. They trained its death squads and it was they who collapsed the peace process. The biggest blow to the peace process was struck as the US and the UK invasion of Iraq was underway. The US action to prevent the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam from attending a crucial aid meeting meant that for the first time the parity of status between the two parties was broken. US action led to the breakdown of the peace process and opened the way to the genocidal attack on the Tamil people in the Vani. Why? Sivaram was right when he said the Tamils unfortunately occupy an area that is very important. The US and its competitors covet Trincomalee Harbour. They know that Sri Lanka's strategic location overlooking the Indian Ocean sea lanes is crucial to keeping control of the shipments of Middle Eastern oil. What drives the concern of the United States or that matter India or China? Their concern is not humanitarian but global power politics. We oppose the terrorism of the Sri Lankan state and the imperialist powers that have been its principal ally, both historically and in terms of the steps that triggered the final onslaught on the Tamils from 2006 onwards. That is why it was right that the Dublin Tribunal raised alongside the charge of genocide the charge of crime against peace. Peace. 
The United States and United Kingdom broke the peace process deliberately and ensured that Sri Lankan state turned back to war against the Tamils. I welcome the news that our friends in Dublin are preparing a second tribunal specifically focused on the key issue of the crime against peace, the deliberate collapsing of the peace process that was orchestrated by the US and Britain. And I say to the government of my country, Britain, if you support human rights for Tamils, why are you carrying out mass deportations? against all reasonable evidence and against the victim's testimony themselves. How can we respect the moral authority of the UK government to defend human rights? We cannot. The most shocking thing of all is not that the imperialist powers have been a silent and hypocritical partner in genocide. From Kenya to Indonesia, from Guatemala to Iraq, they have done this many times before. The shock is the position that's been adopted by the socialist countries left in the world. The socialist tradition is to support the right of nations to self-determination and to see national liberation as a progressive force. The right of nations to self-determination applies to peoples like the Tamil people and, and their right to form an independent state, not states as such. And I say as a follower of the Cuban revolution and progressive governments in Latin America. Comrades, your defense of the Sri Lankan state is very, very wrong and it offends against the principles of socialism. I appeal to you in Cuba to reconsider your position. Pragmatism does not mean counter-revolution. I invoke Cuba's own honorable tradition of tri-continental solidarity between the peoples of Africa, of Asia and of Latin America to call on you Cuba to condemn the Sri Lankan state and to support the Tamil people. The independence of an inquiry must be designed in from the outset. As exemplified by this Human Rights Council, the United Nations, the United Nations of States, but in no real sense a United Nations of uniting the peoples of the world. The slaughter of the Tamil people is to the shame of the entire United Nations system. The UN is no guarantor of independence. Let us now move on from lobbying to popular mobilization. We should all be doing like the marches from Brussels have done. Our appeal is to the peoples of the world, to the decent-minded folk who respect the truth and will help us to mobilize and inter national humanitarian solidarity movement for a genuine independent inquiry. We have exhausted the possibilities of the international state system and while there remain decent people in the United Nations as a system the UN has proven worse than useless. It is totally morally bankrupt because it cannot be independent of state power politics. We have to go outside the state system. We have to go to the people and to the social movements that might respond to the sufferings of Tamil civil society. I see that you've not only come from Brussels but you've come from all over Europe today. You have the power. Maybe you have more power than you realize or imagine but let us dare to imagine. Go out and mobilize the people of Europe onto our side. Explain the case. This is a long and sometimes harder road, but it is now the only realistic option. Get articles into local and national newspapers. Go to the social movements. Talk to the people in the classrooms, in the workplaces, in the neighborhoods. Go out onto the streets again and again and again. What is our lesson? What is our lesson? Our lesson is that hope is very important. The spirit of Tamil Elam is inside every one of you, and you know it. Take your knowledge and take your flags, like the friends from Brussels, 
Take your suffering and go to the people of the world. You have the power, you have the power to bring about the inquiry. No more human rights violations end the occupation. Forward to an independent international inquiry. Mobilize the people for truth and justice. Long live Tamil Elam.